Hey everybody, it's Brian back with Inspiring How You See That. We're the channel that talks about all different kinds of music and entertainment, brings you inspirational stories, and interviews some of your favorite artists. And today I have a very special guest with me. I have country star Jason Benoit. And Jason, thank you so much for spending this time with us. Oh man, thank you so much for having me. I appreciate it. Absolutely. Now we've been fan of yours, actually. We've been talking for a little while, so it's a uh, this has been a while coming to be able to do this. So this has been incredible. <laughs> right on. So Great you're actually here. Absolutely. You're actually up in Canada. Uh, where are you yeah. located at? I'm in um, Newfoundland. Uh, okay. On, on the, right on the east coast of Canada. Nice. Are you guys yeah. getting hit with the, sto- the snowstorm right now like we are? That's, uh, that's coming up. I think it's going to be here by Friday or something, but uh, I think it's supposed to miss where I'm to, so it's great because I'm oh, so nice. tired. Of, I'm, I'm tired of winter now. So <laughs> <laughs> We're getting it now. I'm right along Lake Erie, so I'm in Erie, PA, oh, yeah. and my buddy Kevin's oh, in Ohio, yeah. so we're getting it now, and that's going to kind of swing up that way towards you. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's supposed to be a doozy, so. <laughs> yeah. So hopefully, like you said, it misses you, and, you know, keep having some nice weather, so. I, I think it's supposed to hit new, the, the other side of the island where I'm to, uh, but uh, not where I am, so that's good. They can have it over there. <laughs> nice. Now, Newfoundland, is that the area where, like, Great Big Sea was from? Are they from around yep. where you are? Uh, there, well, Newfoundland, uh, the island is about, uh, from one end to the other to drive, it's about 10 hours. Okay. So they, yeah, I live on the opposite side from where they're, they're from. I'm, a, I'm about nine hours from, from where they're, where they're two in St. John's. Okay. Very cool. Yeah. 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 Of- yeah I live in a small town. I'm sorry, buddy. I, oh, okay. I, cut you off. I live in a, just a small town on the, on the West coast, uh, about 200 people. Oh, so you are kind of in the middle of nowhere then. Yeah, 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 pretty much. I'm about 25, not too bad. I'm tw- about 25 minutes away from a Walmart, so. Well, there you go. That's perfect, then. <laughs> That's perfect, yeah. It's close go and get what you need and get back out. <laughs> That's right, yeah, yeah. Nice. Now, I kind of wanted to jump right in with your musical style. Um, as I've been listening to your music, I, I hear a lot of what's similar to early Jason Aldean. And then mm-hmm. I also, some of the style, like, you know, I'm thinking one of the songs, um, Never Stop Loving You, reminded me of Dean Brody. Okay. And then I heard a little bit of Brooks and Dunn in a lot about a little. Yeah, yeah, hundred percent. So, yeah. who were some of your influences as you were growing up? Uh, when I well, when I first started playing uh, guitar, I, I leaned on a lot of the old country influences. So um, George Jones and um, like a lot of nineties, eighties, uh, nineties country, and um, a, a lot of my family. We used to. I used to go to parties on on uh, probably every you know two or three weeks with with family. Uh, everyone will just get together, and uh, a lot of my family played music and uh, and sang and stuff. So um, uh, that's you know I learned a lot of music from them, and and they were a big influence. And they listened and sang a lot of that country, and and that's uh, my older brother too. My older brother uh, he's eight years older than me, but he taught me how to play guitar when I was fourteen, and and he played like a ton of of uh this was like 94 of, you know 96 97 so um like we so much like early 90s country so like um joe diffie and mark chestnut and and um nice. and you know uh garth brooks and all that stuff so i grew up with all that that's the stuff that i i listened to a lot when i was a kid yeah that's in my opinion the golden age of country that's when i grew up with it too the 90s oh yeah <laughs> yeah that was the best man like you said garth and brooks and dunn and alan it was a Jackson. perfect mix you know it's a perfect mix of old and new right yep they, they yeah I mean, you got so guys well. like chris ledoux that that bridge yeah. those two generations and yeah yeah 100 yeah and that was one of the things that i wanted to ask you about and getting your opinion when when i listen to canadian country music I think you guys are more in line with that style of country from like the nineties and the early two thousands. Whereas here it's much more pop now and I'm drawn to what you guys are doing. <laughs> so <laughs> well, why do great. you think there's that difference in Canadian country music? Uh, I think, um, well, Canada has always been a little behind the, uh, <laughs> the what the Americans, uh, what Nashville has been doing. <laughs> uh, I think uh, I definitely think there's a lot of uh, pop elements now in, in in Canadian country radio, top forty country radio from Canadian artists. Um, but I think I think I don't know. I think I think we just we've got a little more flexibility. I think just to do, uh, you know, just to to be creative and do the kind of stuff that we love. I think. A little bit more than maybe what you're hearing on on say top forty radio at Nashville, right? 
Sure. So it's a, it's a, there's, I mean, and there's, I mean, there's so many, even in, you know, down in, there's so many different uh, sides of country music uh, uh, in the, in the U S too. I mean, you know, like Tyler Childers and, and uh, yeah. Sergio Simpson and, you know, like, and, and that side, I mean, that's not on country radio, but that's a huge, it's a massive market. Like, you know, so it's, um, I think, I don't know. I think, um, I think Canada's a little bit, it's much the same. It's just a lot smaller. Uh, so it's, it's, it's a, um, it's, I don't know. It's, it's, you know, no, you don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, a little I'm, I'm trying, I'm trying to, trying to make sense of it all myself. <laughs> I got you. That makes sense. <laughs> and I'll be the first thing. I, I, every time I've gone up to Canada, I love it there. I mean, you guys have better country music. You have better beer. There's good looking women everywhere I go up there. So, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll always have a blast up there. You're good, good man. Now we were talking before we started, um, and actually, your last album came out last year. It was Time Traveler, but you were telling me you actually have a new album coming soon. Yeah, that was uh, side A. That was a, a, a six song EP. Time Traveler side A and side B is coming out on 31st of of March. So. Um, so it's going to be another seven songs, and uh, yeah, it's going to be it's going to be fun. It was all one project, but just because of the the way the, um, uh, the uh, streaming services work with music, it's sure. like they when you release, just say if you release a full album on um, of say you know ten, thirteen, fifteen songs. All at once, uh, they ask, they usually focus on one song. They ask you, "What's your focus track on that album?" So then, once you release more songs, um, just say to radio, they they don't do the they don't do that after because it's okay. considered it's it's considered released already, right? So it's um, you you know artists and independent artists especially are having to find little ways of trying to get a leg up and, and when it comes to getting streams and and um and different things like that and that's one of the ways is just to to release music i think and that's why i think a lot of uh, artists now are releasing singles uh yeah. more so than albums anymore for one thing it's cheaper but it's just the way the system is uh, it's uh it's 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 a leaning way more towards singles now than it is full albums so there's not much of a benefit anymore in releasing full albums when it comes to getting more streams, you know, sure. which at the end of the day, which is how you make money and how you, you know, you get popular and, and, and you can get out there and play more and more people can see you. So, so it's a, yeah, it's an interesting little world we're living in right now. But uh, so, like I said, so I released the, the first EP back in March of last year. And now uh, side B of that same EP is coming out now on the 31st. So very cool. Now, are you going to have kind of a theme going through it because it's it's the second half of an EP, or is it going to be like seven separate songs? It's it's basically the same theme, the same style of songs on the first. It's just you know obviously different songs. Just the um, the, the whole time traveler concept was meant to be about um, you know just releasing songs. It was sort of like a concept album, uh, releasing music that that you probably wouldn't hear on the radio today, but you might have heard, you know, 20, 30 years ago or something like that, right? So, um, and I love that stuff. I still listen to that stuff all the time. That's basically, you know, that's the main style of music I listen to, to be honest. And uh, um, so, I, you know, when we wrote that album, actually, me and my good buddy, Jerry, um, I mean, we didn't even plan on releasing it. We were just writing songs we we would want to hear and and sing and and have fun with, like just sitting around having a few beer, right? And um, and that's that's basically how it was written. And and we didn't even uh, we didn't expect to to release it. And then uh, well, we had a bunch of songs all together, and we we're like, hey, well, you know, like I didn't have anything else coming up in the queue, and I'm like, you know, I I've, we've got all these great songs. Um, let's release them. And, um, you know, we got it produced, we produced it and, and, uh, and we had a blast. I mean, I, co I co-produced the album and, and it was so much fun. And, um, I didn't realize how much I enjoyed the creative, creative side of, of, uh, of making the music, you know, sure. uh, it's, it's very, uh, for me, especially because I'm a writer and, um, it was just so fulfilling. Nice. So fulfilling. 
Yeah. And I could definitely see that in the, the latest song that you put out, which was VHS. I thought yeah. that was cool. I mean, the video, you had a lot of your, your home videos growing up, and that was a cool concept. So now I can see where that fits in with the whole plan that you're talking about. Uh, what made you decide to make a video like that? Uh, well, I mean, <laughs> I had so much old video from <laughs> from the past, and I was like, you know what? I mean, it, it'd be, it's a no-brainer. I mean, it's just <laughs> the whole the whole you know theme of the song is is VHS tapes, and and uh, you know, I used to I listen, I used to watch them when I was a kid, and so much uh, just for fun, and as like uh, you know, watching weddings and, and uh, parties and all kinds of stuff, right? So uh, like we, I've I've got like a load of, of stuff that. I think I could use and put together. So we put it together for the for the uh, video. Yeah, very cool. Now, one video that I wanted to talk to you about, and actually a collaboration that you did, uh, was with Leah Daniels, and you did yeah. the Conway Twitty song "Slow Hand," and that came out awesome. You guys sounded incredible together. Uh, were you friends with her? How did that come about? That collaboration. Uh, yeah, we had known each other for a little while. Just be, uh, you know, just going. Through through uh, to the different events uh like the awards and different things like that and and um you know we, we've just had the opportunity that i the producer that we were going to use that we were using at the time uh, was was also working on a project with leah so we we didn't know uh, at the beginning we didn't think we were gonna we didn't really think we we're gonna do a duet uh, we we're just gonna release it as a as a solo um you know uh, track and and then um you know, it was good. We we liked it, but we thought, you know, it's, it's just it could. Have, what can we add that to give it a bit more sparkle? And and um, and you know, Leah, she, Leah was uh, was there, and and the producer said, "What about Leah?" And you know, she's I've I've known her for for a while before that, and uh, and she just fit like a glove on that track. We just. Just saying it's so good. I mean, she's put down some vocals and, and she's and the producer sent them over and it uh, sounded great. So um, uh, we're like, yeah, this this there's no there's no doubt that we we got to release this one as a as a duet. So and it was a bit different because I don't think it's as I know it's been covered a few times in the past and and uh, but nobody's ever done it as a duet. So I thought, hey, yeah. that'll be that'll be something a little different anyway, right? Yeah, and the two of you sounded so. Well, you think that you'd worked together before, singing together? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, no, we've never, uh, we didn't do anything before that. But uh, yeah, she's she's a sweetheart. She's, Very cool. Uh, she's definitely talented. Yeah, nice. And I know uh, one thing I wanted to ask you about while everyone was going through the lockdown, you actually did what's called Friday night lockdowns, uh, That's you know, right. online kind of sessions. And so was that just? Because you were going stir crazy and you wanted to be able to talk to people. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Basically, I mean, there was nothing for for two years, uh, and it was. Uh, I mean, you had we had to come up with ideas of, of how to stay connected with our fans. That was the first, actually, for me because before that, I didn't do any live streaming like that. It, it, okay. Sit down, you know, and just sing songs and chat with the fans and stuff like that. That was the first time I've ever done that. And it, it took like, it took a few, uh, a few episodes to, to really get used to it. It felt so awkward because you're, you're always, you know, you're used to a, a, a crowd in front of you and, and working off the crowd and, and stuff like that. So when there's nobody in front of you and, and there's, you're just re trying to read words on a screen while you're in between songs and stuff like that. It's like <laughs> sometimes I'd be singing a song and I'd be reading at the same time and it'd throw me off. <laughs> so, I mean, it took a little, it took a little while to get used to doing that, but, uh, but I love, man, I, I, you know, after the first, uh, few episodes, I mean, just getting used to it. I, it was so much fun and I loved it just as much as they did. It was, it was great. Nice. Was it a little different not being able to see the crowd and kind of read their reaction? Uh, yeah, definitely. <laughs> but but, but at, the, at the same time, it kind of kind of gives you a, a bit of freedom because you're not really focused on how the, the crowd is reacting, you know? Because if True. you're singing a song in a, in a say, in a crowd, and the crowd's not really, you know, feeling a slow song at that point, like the crowd's going to do what they're going to do, go get a beer and just kind of you know kind of lose focus sometimes and then um so it's like there, i didn't have that i just i could do i didn't care i just sang whatever i wanted to <laughs> nice you're like yeah. i'm gonna do a bow right now just 
I want yeah, to. <laughs> I don't care. I just want to do it. Yeah, basically, that's how it went. But I mean, nice. it's at the same time, man. You just, you know, you you had, you still had to keep in mind that pe- normally, but this was on Friday night, so people were watching it, uh, probably having a, a a beer or something like that, and wanting <laughs> trying to warm up before they go out or something. Oh, well, I couldn't go out; they were all locked down. So they, they were so so anyway, they were they were probably you know just staying home and and having having their party at home that night. So. So I tried to uh, I try to keep it upbeat a bit, but uh, no, I just I think it it was definitely different. But yeah, at the end I did enjoy it. Uh, it was it's a lot of fun. I don't do it anymore now, just because it's uh, we're back to uh, you know not being locked down. People are going out, but nice. but uh, every now and then I'll do it. I'll bring it back just for fun. Nice. Now, are you out doing live shows now, or, or any tours planned? Um, any la- any of the, um, the the lockdown shows I'm not doing now. Live shows right now, um, yeah, I'm, we're you know getting stuff booked for the summer and uh, up here in Canada and, and uh, some touring coming up for the fall and stuff like that. So it's uh, it's it's still a little weird after COVID to be honest, because um, business wise, if you look at it, I mean it's it's nice. If you're, you know, if you're a charting um, entertainer, uh, it's it's real easy to get work. Um, I mean, it's but if you, you know, if you, right now I'm I'm not really I'm not on the charts. I mean, it's I'm, I'm an independent artist and and I'm releasing music and I'm, you know I've got a great fan base and stuff like that. But I mean, we I rely on promoters to 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 purchase shows to to uh, put put shows on and and um and to, through my booking agency and and uh i mean it's right now the 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 whole industry is because of the last three years just took such a hit yeah. that uh, that that are the you know they're not getting as many artists anymore and they're the ones that are getting are either top 10 artists or are artists that are you know just starting who can do it for a couple hundred bucks you know what i mean sure. so it's it's a it's a uh, it's a strange industry right now to be in, and it's uh, it's reality, man. That's uh, at the end of the day, it's this is a job, you know. I love yeah. what I do, but but it's uh, it's, a, it's an interesting place to be at this moment right now. Like, there's <laughs> a lot of people, uh, yeah, a lot of people are are, uh, are starting to feel that the pinch from the last few years, you know. Yeah. Well, unfortunately, <laughs> even a lot of the venues have closed. You know, yeah, hundred percent. Come back, hundred percent, and festivals too. I mean, yeah. I know there's two major festivals in Canada that are uh, that aren't coming back. So, uh, I mean, holy crap! Yeah, that's nuts, man. Wow. Hopefully they will, because we we yeah. we need the live news. <laughs> I think that yeah, they will. I mean, it's just you know, it's taken. It's the entertainment is the one of the first things to be cut when yeah. times are tough. You know, yeah, because it's it's not a necessity. It's just you know, it's. It's important, but it, it's you know, it, it, people don't really, absolutely, it's needed at the end of the day to survive. Right. So that's one of the things that that often suffers in in times of uh, hardship. But uh, but again, it it, it causes uh, artists to create new forms of music, right? Which is what I did um, because this is this when I wrote the album, it's uh, it was during the uh, the pandemic. So. Sure. Um, so yeah, we did. We didn't. Uh, again, we didn't. Didn't plan that. I think we just did it for our sanity, right? Just sat down, sang, played songs, wrote songs, and and uh, had a few beer together, and and that's how it was written. And yeah, with the rest nice. is history. <laughs> <laughs> now, growing up on that great country music, like I did, have you ever wanted to experiment with maybe rock or some other different kinds of music? Oh yeah, I mean. Jeez, my my older brother, he listened to everything from Metallica to to Guns N' Roses, and you know I listened to Nirvana and Pearl Jam, and you know like great all those all those great 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 artists uh, from back in the day, and and um, I mean at parties, not everybody wants to hear country music all night, so I mean I sang I sang a lot of classic rock. I think okay, uh, I, I gravitated more towards classic rock than more modern rock and stuff like that. But so like, you know, like CCR, John Fogarty and, and, um, you know, um, brown eyed girl and all those tunes that people want to hear at a party. <laughs> Who knows nice. the words to? They know the words to. <laughs> awesome. Yeah. So I got a question for you, you know, in five, 10 years or so, how do you want your legacy to be with fans? How, how do you want people to look back and say, Jason Benoit, 
this is what he meant to me as an artist. I think, to, in all honesty, this this latest project that I've been working on, it's probably the most proud I've ever been to uh, of a piece of work that I've ever released. And okay. I think it's because it's more, it's most genuine to me. Um, so I think in in ten years from now, I think they, I hope they look back on that and say, you know, that those songs, they're still good today. You know, it's not like. It's not like we were just releasing some music to try to be a, the, what's popular, you know, and try to copy what the guy on the radio was trying to do. I hope they they listen to the tunes and say those were great songs then and they're great songs now. I think that would be amazing. Sure. Yeah. Snow, I'll ask you to kind of sell yourself and, and Canadian country to the American audience. So if you could <laughs> tell the American audience what they're missing out, because we're trying our best. To share yeah. you guys, but from from one of the the top Canadian artists themselves, what would be your sales pitch to the American country fan? Wow, I mean, if you like if you like real country, like again, because I I realize you know it's Canada, and we're not we don't we're not from the south, you know we're not, we're not that's 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 not where we we come from, but real country runs runs deep. Yep. In in our history, and 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 we all we all got it from you guys, but but uh, man, it's so good, and we love it. Um, and and I mean, I mean that's what I grew up on. I grew up on the same music as as what you guys did, right? So, um, I think I think Canada's got incredible traditional country roots to it. I think you know, and yeah. still I think, and I think that's still holds true today and and a lot of artists um on in in canada canadian country radio too are are uh, releasing music that you know has a lot more twang to it now than they used to even um you know in the last i'd say in the last 10 years i mean it, it did get a little poppy for for a while but i think a lot of music is going back down that traditional country music way and and um uh, it's great it's so good it's, it's uh Music, yeah, you got to get to check it out. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. I agree one hundred percent with that assessment. Check out Jason. Check out some of those others. It's there's some awesome music up there. And Jason, before we go, we had mentioned beers a couple times. So when I go up, I go with my standard like Labatt's. And what's oh, yeah. a good beer when I go up to Canada to try? Oh Lord, I drink <laughs> uh, I drink MGD or I'm a I'm a vodka drinker. So okay. I, I don't know. It's hard to say. I like whiskey. I like vodka. So I'm, um, uh, but I, I'm a, I drink MGD and, and Corona. So <laughs> <laughs> both, both are now from Canada. <laughs> I was uh, gonna say it's the same stuff we got. <laughs> uh, yeah, pretty much the same stuff. It's just that it's, uh, I, I man, I was down in Nashville and, and you're, you're, I don't, it's just Budweiser, but man, I think you American Budweiser tastes a lot better than Canadian Budweiser. That's for sure. <laughs> okay. All right. <laughs> that's great. It's so good. Um, I, I don't know the, the the craft stuff. I guess like the, if you like craft beer and and a lot, a lot of local breweries and stuff, there's some really really good local craft beer and stuff like that. So I think if you're a good beer fan, I mean you got to hit up any of those uh, craft beer places. There's so many now. It's it's nuts. Every town you go to, there's a there's a craft uh, beer uh, you know place to get beer. So um, yeah yeah, there's there's a ton. I mean, I couldn't, I, I can't say one exactly because they're different in every town. So the <laughs> it's true. But the, right? It's true. So, uh, but yeah, I'd say check those out. Nice. Outside of that, it's just, it's all horse piss. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. <laughs> That's a good point. <laughs> well, Jason, this has been awesome. I really appreciate your time. And hopefully, I'm hoping when you get out on tour, you'll maybe come to, to southern Ontario, like Toronto or, you know, St. Catharines or London. I'd love to come up oh, yeah. and, and see you live. And I know my buddy Kevin would as well. So, All right on. Cool. That'd be yeah, incredible. for sure. Yeah, I'll uh, I'll definitely let you know. That'd be awesome. Awesome. We'll, awesome. Have, one of the, we'll have a beer. That's right. We'll, <laughs> we'll try some different ones. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> Before yeah, we go, sure. Jason, is there anything that you'd like to say to fans? Oh, geez. I mean, I wouldn't be here today with the fans. So, uh, you know, if, if you've, if you know who I am and if you've heard me before, thanks for listening. If, if you're, uh, if you're new, uh, check it out, check out my, my new tunes. If you like good, good, uh, you know, soulful art, heart bleeding, 
country music and it's uh i got a few of those songs so <laughs> awesome and i agree we'll, we'll put all the links down below so you guys can find them make sure you check them out I, I absolutely love his music like he said if you like country music you're gonna love it make sure you check it out check out his videos you know give him a shot you, you you're gonna want more trust me <laughs> the good news is more is coming very soon so again jason thank you so much for spending this time with us it's, it's really been a blessing oh thank man thank you i really appreciate it absolutely and as always, we want to thank you guys for spending this time with us. We love you all. God bless and rock on. Bye -bye.